you know, this, this, this revolution is filled with so many ironies, really. Uh, first, you tell us that it is manly to keep your word. All right? If you are a man, you keep your word. And now all that the black people in this country are demanding, and even the black people in the whole world are demanding, is that you keep your word. You told us we were free. Well, then, show us that we're free. You told us that there is justice, equality for all in this country. Well, then, stick to your word and let us see the justice and equality for all. Or else admit to us that you're not a man. You're a worm. You're afraid of us. You're afraid to give us equal stand. You're afraid that if you give us equal ground that we will match you and we will override you. And if that's what you're afraid of us, then, then tell us that just what you're afraid of. But don't keep hiding it from us and, and holding this up to us. And every time we ask you for something, you give us a little bit of something. And it's all tokenism. We don't want tokenism. And there are most black men in this world that don't want charity. And yet still every time we ask you for something, you give us a little piece, a little piece. You're playing games with us. We're not children. We're, we're big men. I've seen my father have to put up with all kinds of stuff. He was a big man. He raised a family. He went down south and he had to go around to the back door with his wife. We're not asking for anything. We're not asking for any favors. All we want is what's ours. Now, there are many black veterans who are coming back and they're mad. They're angry. Do you think that they're going to sit down through this? Our fathers didn't have the knowledge that we had. They sat through it. But there are other black youth that are not going to sit through it. We know about Che. We know about uh, Fannin. We've read the books of our revolution. We've listened to Mao and his quotations. We know where we stand. We're not going to sit for it. We're asking, and if we ask and we don't get, we're prepared to stand up and take it. If I ask a man, I tell a man I am hungry. I tell him I am cold. And I ask him to do something about my condition. And this man holds a loaf of bread right in front of me so I can see it. And I keep asking him, I'm begging him to please give me a slice of the loaf of bread. I am hungry. Then it is known by every psychologist that the next step in the progression is I am going to knock him upside the head and take the bread from him. I'm not going to starve to death. All we're asking no one wants to see blood. No one likes the smell of blood. No one wants war. Anyone who's been in war doesn't want war. Everyone knows what it is to see the inside of a man's gut hanging out and see your friends die, see relatives die. No one wants to regress back to the state of mind where you have to think it's all for the cause. Therefore, my mother has to die. My wife has to die. My brothers and sisters have to die. No one wants that. But you're pushing us to it. You're leaving us no choice. We're asking, we're begging. The students up at Columbia, they ask. The brothers down south ask. The brothers in Latin America, the brothers in Africa, they're all asking. All they're doing is asking. Our fathers asked. Our grandfathers asked. The presidents of our universities, our colleges, had to go to your back doors to beg that their children be given just enough money so that they could be taught something to live off. And, and yet still, they asked and asked and asked, and you refused to give them anything. Now, we're, all, we're just about out of patience. We're not going to ask anymore. The news media says that it's only the young that are militant, only the young that want this and want that. Okay, but we're 40% of the black population now. Or we were a year ago, and still yet we're climbing. Before long, we'll be 50%, 55%, and then we'll have the command. We're not going to take it. We're not going to take sitting in, in rotten parks and in, in, in places that just aren't fit for living. We're not going to take it. There's a limit to a man's patience. And everyone knows that God, Christ, heaven, everyone knows that what we're asking is not a million dollars. What we're asking for is humanity. We're asking to be allowed to live like human beings. And God, you tell us that this is too much to ask. You're sick. You're definitely sick. How can you tell me that it's too much to ask to be a human being?